Now what is Paul going to blow our minds with? That's what we're going to find out in Romans 6. Woo-wee. So Romans 6 starts out with the chapter called Dead to Sin, Alive to God. He says, well, what should we say then? Should we keep sinning so grace abounds? We've heard that before. So people say, oh, well, the more I sin, the more Jesus forgives and the better Jesus is. And Paul says to that, by no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? You know, we fall into this swamp, this, you know, pile of mud, this horrible thing, and we've been saved from it. Are we going to keep just living in this pile of mud forever? Are we going to still keep doing this? But we've been baptized into Jesus Christ, baptized into his death. And so we were buried. You know, the, they, a lot of times, you know, churches call it the old Adam. But what was from us is gone and now is just death. And so Christ raised us from the dead, not just in the future when he's going to raise us from the dead, but he's raised us from the dead now. Sin is death. A sinful life is a, is a life of death. And Jesus has already raised us all from that life of sin and death. So we're already resurrected. Now we're going to be resurrected again in the perfect body. We have already are turning that life away from us. And he said that we can walk in, quote, the newness of life. That's a very deep statement. And you think about that. And he says that we have been united to him, with him in his death. And so we'll be united with him in the resurrection. And that we know our old self is just gone. He calls it crucified. That the body of sin is brought nothing to us. It has enslaved us for everything. You know, I see people in today's and they say, well, I don't want to be a Christian because there's all these rules and, I ha- and, I'm, and I'm a free soul. I live my life and I want to live a free existence. And he's saying, no, you don't know it. You don't recognize it. But when you're living a life of sin, you are a slave to it. You know, I think about that all the time. Like my dad, my dad probably started out drinking as a fun thing to do with his Air Force buddies after work, right? Oh, we're going to go out and have a couple of beers. I wonder how long it took where he became a slave to drinking. He could not stop if he wanted to. How many sins do we have that we want to stop, that we want to get away from, and we just can't get away from it? It seems enticing at first, maybe even fun, but we know that it just leads us to death. It leads us to the the lesser life. If you're sitting there and doing all these things against God and you say, I'm a free person living a happy life. I saw that with one of the singers that she basically said, I love my life of sin. It is so much fun. How many people have we seen come out of Hollywood and music? who it started out fun. It started out seeing like it was a lot of fun. And then it turned into a nightmare for them. Do you think Robert Downey Jr.? I mean, not to throw him under the bus, but do you think he wanted what he got later in life? He put a gun in his mouth, but he started out probably being the life of the party. I I think that's where it all sends that we are going to be a slave. We're going to be a slave to Jesus who wants us to have the best life ever. A servant, a bond servant that we have chosen. Or we're going to be a slave to sin, and sin is not going to let go of us easily at all. Sin is going to try to do what it can to have its grip on us. And so he says, we've been set free from sin. When I first became a Christian, my pastor had a class for new Christians called Set Free. That's where it is, right here in Romans 6. And so if we have died with Christ and we believe that we will also live with him, then we know that, that we're raised from the dead, we'll never die again, and death will no longer have any potency over us. That's it. It atoned for everything. It, it, it's the final thing. And he lives on with God. And we're going to live on with God. And so we have to consider ourselves, he says, quote, dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Christ, again, means Messiah. So he says, let's not sin, therefore, with our bodies, but make your passions obey you know, rein everything in. You know, I, I think people feel like they're just leaves on the wind. I think I said that in another podcast. 
that life is just blowing us around like a leaf, you know, floating around from here to there. No, we should make our bodies obey. We should make our mind obey. We should rein it in. In my own personal experience, the more you do it, the better you get and the easier it gets. And then you start living a life of faith. I, I think the pandemic did something for me. I mean, not saying I didn't have faith before, but suddenly when we didn't know what was going to happen and there was a lot of doubt going on and you said, you know what? Either way, whatever happens from here, I am with God. God is with me. This is how my life is going. I say it before. I read the end of the book. I know how this is going to go. I think this is what he's saying here, too, that when we have made our thoughts obey us, that have no dominion over us, and that we're not under the law, but we're under grace, we're going to, to rein in what our body is. We're not supposed to sin. We're going to be obedient in the heart. And that is, he said, the standard teaching to which you were committed. We've been set free from it. We, we were slaves, and now we became slaves. I'm going to check that word again, which then means that it's that same word to be a bond slave. Again, that kind of slave that you have picked to be a slave. Your time of servitude is up, and now you're voluntarily bringing yourself under what it says, subjection, so that you're held as under bondage by righteousness now. We were in sin, and now we're voluntarily coming under righteousness. And he says that he's speaking at, in human terms because we all, you know, he says the natural, you know, this body, this existence we have has limitations. But now we're, we're slaves to righteousness, and that leads to sanctification. That's a good word. So I think we know righteousness means following the thing that you're supposed to follow. But sanctification is an interesting word, and so we're going to look that one up. But essentially, it means to be set apart, to be made holy, you know, that you have been put aside for a special holy purpose. And it comes into this idea that the Holy Spirit is indwelling with us so that we can live a life of holiness adhering to what Christ wants for us, right? that we are now grown together, I guess, is a good word for it. I'm trying to come up with a good word for it, but that we're grown together. And so that we now have the Holy Spirit with us. And so we don't have to be slaves to sin anymore. We can now go and live towards righteousness. We're not going to be perfect, but then go to that set aside sanctification. We're special. You know, and you saw that, I, I think, in, in the Old Testament a lot of times where something was set aside to be given to the temple or the perfect lamb to be set aside, you know, for sacrifice. And we're saying, when you start leading a life of righteousness, that is when you're going to take those first steps to where you're going to now go into sanctification, that special part. And the Holy Spirit that is indwelled in us, mean it doesn't come and rest upon us. The Holy Spirit came upon Peter Instead, it is inside of us. And we know the Holy Spirit's favorite thing to talk about, Jesus. So that's exactly what's happening. So Paul is saying that we can go to that extent, getting away from the slavery of sin and going towards that slavery of righteousness, kingdom thinking, being bound to God, living that sanctified, that separated, that holy life that God has called us to live. And that basically, we have two alternatives right there. Do you want sin that is going to trap you and snare you and lead you to death? Or are you going to pick liberation in Christian freedom of living towards God, living the life that God wants you to live because he knows you better than anybody else knows you at all? And I think, too, that when you start offering yourself into the service of Jesus, when you start walking in the path that he wants you to, not because it's going to earn our salvation, but because everything just sort of feels right. I had a bad analogy that when you're living a life against God's will, it's like trying to brush a cat backwards. You know, they hate it. You hate it. It's not how it goes, right? You brush a cat with the way their fur goes. When we're living this life of sin, when we're doing the things that God told us not to do or not doing the things that God us that God told us to do, it's, it's, it's like life 
backwards. It's, it's away from what it is that we're supposed to do. And I find more and more as I learn about God and I learn about the things he wants, my life feels more natural. My life feels more like in this proper track, you know, like it's going the way I want to go, not in like a financial way or a comfort way or a American dream kind of way, but in a way like, oh yeah, God, you know, this is, this is the path you picked for me. It's, it's feeling locked in the proper way. And so we can get, he says, uh, you know, another translation says holiness. So if you look at other translations of this, ESV calls it sanctification. And most of the other translations call it holiness too. I think we understand that word better. But sanctification, I think, is beyond just being uh, holy. It is about being set aside for holiness, that now holiness is our special purpose in life. I hope that uh, makes sense. Like I said, that's the difference between reading the Bible and doing a podcast on the Bible because you got to look it up and figure out what it means. And so he says you were slaves to sin. Now you're free in righteousness and the fruits. So we get back into the fruits. And I love the discussion we had in the Gospels about fruit, about the fig tree that produces fruit or does a thorn produce a grape, you know. Once you start getting into that righteousness and living the life that God has asked you to live, that's when the fruits come. That's when you're in gear for things. And so we're free. And people say, well, you're not free. You have to do the things God told you to do. But we're free because we're away from the the, the chains of this world, the things that tied my dad, my dad down. I hope I hope he came to God at the end and he's free of all these chains he had in his life. I mean, I hope that's what happens to us. But that's what's going to happen with us, that we're going to be free and we're going to produce amazing fruits because now we're being the fig tree that does that. And Paul calls into question, he says, what what fruits were you getting during this time when you were slaves to sin? It's all death. You you know, I, I think that's true. You know, you see people who live a life of sin and they're like, I'm having the, the best life. I am the life of the party. And then you find out later, you know, if you ever watch like these musician documentaries, well, it looked like this band member was having the time of his life, but it turned out, you know, all these things were happening to him. I was listening to just recently an uh, interview with John Voight and he didn't want to sin. He didn't want to fall away from God. But somehow he ended up doing it. And then he got to a place where he was begging in desperation. It's not quite the life you think it is. And now I think that musician who says that her life is super fun because she's living the life of sin. I wonder what kind of documentary we're going to see out of that. But now we've been set free. We're slaves of God. Our fruits are going to lead to sanctification. Again, that special set aside holiness. And in the end, it's eternal life. The wages of sin is death, and the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is the direct quote from ESV. Boy, that ends chapter six. Like I said, I'm really glad these chapters are kind of small. But you can see that what Paul is doing throughout this whole thing is first he sets up this thing. Who is better off, the Jew or the Gentile? Who is better off, the person who does works or the person who has faith? And now he's coming in and saying, now who's better off, the person who's a slave to Jesus or the person who's a slave to sin? We have two paths we can walk. And we're going to walk one path that leads to eternal life, produces good fruit. We do so because we love God and we want to live this kind of life. Or do we live the life of sin? And sin, sin will ensnare us. Sin will... um, Try everything it can to keep us in that direction. So I think Paul is trying to really educate people on all these different comparisons, showing us X versus Y, A versus B, C versus D, so that we understand exactly what it is we're supposed to be doing. What I'm going to meditate on is the fact that we were dead in sin. Even when I wasn't a Christian, and I wasn't that big sinner person, right? I wasn't the person who was going around and doing all the big glorious sins, but I was still sinning. And that means I was harming my fellow people. I wasn't treating people around me the best I could be treating them. I wasn't doing the things that God had asked me to do. You're still not escaping sin 
even if you're not doing the big splashy ones. And I'm going to think a little bit about my old self that's crucified. And now my new self and what my new self should be who lives with Christ. And what I'm going to pray about is that strength that if there is still any old self still in me, there's that old Adam or the old Jill, you know, help me bring it out and help me purify it. Help me, you know, well, help me get away from it so that I can be going towards righteousness and then sanctification. And what I'm going to share with others is that possibility, no matter what kind of enslavement you have with sin right now, it is escapable. You can have it die. You can have it be removed from you. You know, it, it's always going to be a memory and it's always going to have some guilt and it's always going to be, you know, there. I don't think you ever forget your old self, but you have to realize it has no hold on you. Your new life in Christ is your new life. And that is what you got to focus on and that you have to keep working, not to gain your salvation, but so that you can be an instrument of righteousness, so that you can be going down that path towards sanctification. Set aside for holiness. There are better things out there waiting for you. Everyone, God, the Father, God, the Son, the Holy Spirit, they're all waiting for you to take those steps towards righteousness. All right, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Wow. Please remember that you can always email me at jill at smallstepswithgod.com. There's also a podcast by that name too, that if you're interested, I usually talk about Christian topics. And again, I'm trying to, I don't know, spend this fall thinking about my podcasting. Uh, I kind of had some sort of a major setback in some ways. And so I'm, I guess, analyzing what I'm doing. <laughs> So if you have what you wished, start with small steps, small steps with God, this podcast or any of my podcasts should be more like, I'd love to hear from you as a listener to see what I could be doing that would make your life better. Have a wonderful weekend.